Hello and welcome to The Bottom Line on TVP World. This is where we bring you the best of the business and economic stories of the day. I'm your host, Marie Cato. Europe's energy transition towards renewable sources appears to have made considerable strides with June results showing that solar energy was the EU's largest power source for the first time ever. Jan Kennedy tells us more in today's report. This past June was among the hottest on record, with temperatures soaring above 40 degrees Celsius across Western Europe. But while people sought relief from the scorching heat, solar panels were soaking up the sun, becoming the EU's biggest source of power for the first time ever. Solar power soared above 22% of the EU's electricity generation, overtaking nuclear, the usual number one source of supply. This shift came amid reduced nuclear output, largely due to ongoing maintenance and renovation works in France, home to the EU's largest nuclear fleet. And with renewable energy usually cheaper to produce, the choice was obvious. Basically, it's a mix of technical limitations, delayed capacity and the growing impact of renewables uh, on the grid. There were moments, especially during sunny afternoons, when uh, electricity prices dropped basically very low or even turned negative, which is an issue as well. So in those moments, nuclear plants, which are less flexible, sometimes had to scale back their output. After a sluggish start to the year, wind energy production rebounded in May and June, setting new records and covering around 16% of the EU's electricity demand. Meanwhile, coal-fired power, the dirtiest source, dropped to just 6%. In recent years, Poland has made substantial progress in decarbonizing its energy mix and for the first time last month generated more power from renewables than coal. Analysts, however, stress the importance of a stable power supply. Building nuclear power plants and they expanded the fossil gas, gas so it can, it can be used as a, a base load. So, for example, during the during the uh, cloud days when solar capacity is not enough. So basically you can use gas and nuclear. And the second thing is uh, invest into grids that which basically can help to have stable base load because solar and wind in terms of power generation is not the most stable. And that's already happening. The Polish transmission system operator, PSE, has announced a 15 billion euro investment program through 2034 to support the growing share of renewables in the grid. So earlier this month, the EU announced an updated climate target of a 90% reduction of greenhouse gases by 2040. And solar energy covering over 22% of Europe's electricity needs in June can only be considered a signal in the right direction. But given the complexities of Europe's broader energy transition, the landscape we are facing can only be more complex. To tell us more, we are joined by Wojciech Jakubik, founder of the Energy Security Centre here in Poland. Hello and thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. So European think tank Ember has summarized energy production in the EU over the month of June. And as a reminder to our viewers, let's bring up the visual that we saw in our report a moment ago. Uh, we can see solar power overtaking nuclear power. However, taking a look at solar energy a year ago or even two years back, the difference isn't actually that significant. So maybe it's not that solar has had a good month, but perhaps nuclear has performed badly. What are your thoughts on that? Well, uh, we've had issues with nuclear energy uh, in um, accordance to uh, the heat wave that was uh, going through Western Europe. We've seen reports about a decreased capacity in France, especially because of lack of water, which is obviously less accessible when you have a heat wave, when you have a decreased level of water uh, around the country. So that might be the case, but uh, in general, the important thing that was uh, easy to be seen in your uh, uh, report was that this uh, photovoltaic uh, power is also coming in, a, in, in in kind of waves because it depends on weather, it depends on sun, obviously, so you cannot produce uh, electricity during the night. So uh, 
that is the case. That is the most important part that uh, nuclear energy in general provides uh, a stable sub, uh, supply of electricity and it is dependent on our decision. It, it is dependent on the decision of operator or the producer and photovoltaics is more dependent on weather and that is why uh, you need to combine those sources together. It is not a competition. They need to support each other. And that takes me to my next question. So as, as much as moving forward with renewable sources of energy requires commitment and technological developments, solar energy is dependent on the sun. And as you mentioned, Western Europe has been experiencing a heat wave. We really haven't seen much of the sun in Poland uh, this summer yet. Uh, the circumstances for those figures have been really advantageous. So if we don't get enough of the sun, the numbers aren't going to look so great. Yeah, and the numbers uh, will not provide sufficient security of supply because even if you have like 100% generation coming from renewables, it is not 100% sure to get this uh, electricity on time when you need it. And that is the most important part. The heavy industry, the serious uh, economic planning needs a stability of supply and you cannot have it without a stable sources. For now in Poland, it is mainly coal generation of unfortunately, but it is here and we can use it if we want to, that is important. But in future, we want to replace it with nuclear energy uh, just because of this security of supply priority, which is really uh, important. And we see it more and more uh, nowadays, especially after the uh, Iberian blackout and all that is happening after the energy crunch that is showing that we need to move away from fossil fuels from Russia, but not only from Russia, but uh, by doing so, not to lose the security of supply. In the meantime, we need to combine the conventional and unconventional energy sources for the sake of our security, and security is the main priority right now. So the real challenge, would you say, for the EU is developing and upgrading those energy grids? And, and what are the prospects for that? And uh, in the case of Poland, what challenges does Poland experience on that front domestically? Uh, we, we hear that some of the solar power in Poland goes to waste because it has to be connected from the grid to let it balance itself. What solutions can we expect to see here in Poland and in other countries? Well, so uh, in general, uh, the, the grid expansion is one of the solutions we need to uh, provide to have a secure and uh, electricity uh, system, but uh, it's only a part of solution because it's only answering the part of the problem, which is uh, at, uh, uh, that the fact that the renewable energy is located in multiple locations all over the country. It is uh, smaller, but it is uh, dispersed. So you need to connect it. So you need to have a heavy investment counted in uh, in, 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 in thousands of uh, billions of uh, zlotys or euros to make it work. Uh, in the meantime, you need to provide uh, a stable generation uh, that is uh, a backup energy, that is a backup source. You need to uh, replace the fossil fuel generation with the alternatives like nuclear energy and other billions to be spilled, but it is a uh, necessary investment. And all of that combined, it is uh, a way to provide us with the energy security. But you cannot look only at renewables and only at the grid expansion for the sake of renewables development. Uh, you cannot do it ideologically. You need to look for a stable, sustainable solution. And that is why our operator, PSE, is sometimes limiting the renewables because for the sake of our grid, for the sake of the electricity supply, so we can hear each other, we can speak online because we have the electricity, sometimes you need to limit renewables. So it is great we have such record uh, achievements like you've mentioned, but the uh, problem is deeper and you need to look for some credible, sustainable solution, not ideologically looking for numbers. But would you say that Poland's, well, one of Poland's many challenges is that it appears to lack a grid-level battery system. Uh, we now know that, that public aid for deployment in Poland has, has just started, and it's a much longer-term project. 
Yeah, so it is another part of the solution because by having the energy storage, you can stabilize renewables in a different way by uh, removing the over supply from the market and uh, releasing it when it's needed. So that is another part of the solution, another heavy investment to be made, of course, and it is great we have this program of uh, support of such uh, energy storage. Uh, actually, we also have it on a smaller scale. Uh, if anyone wants to get a subsidy for renewables in Poland for the photovoltaics installation uh, in your home, you need to have an obligatory energy storage uh, included in your projects. Uh, the reason is the grid stability, and uh, it is the smaller scale of the same uh, situation that is happening in a greater, to the greater extent in whole system. But would you say that despite the challenges that Poland faces and Poland still being very dependent on coal, uh, Poland is still taking a, well, a positive step in, in the sense that, for instance, uh, Poland's uh, electricity transmission system operator, uh, PSC, has just announced a, a huge uh, investment program worth 15 billion euros that will last till 20 34 and it's got an anti-blackout plan so it's it's taking the right approach would you agree with that i believe we need to answer the issues with the security of supply that were to be seen during the iberian blackout during the issues not only with the old school uh, conventional generation but also when it comes to renewables you need to have a pragmatic approach and this approach is uh, visible in PSE policy since a long time ago. It is uh, one of our uh, backbones of energy strategy, and it's great we have operators like PSE, like Gas System. They look at the system uh, from the, uh, uh, they see the bigger picture and they make uh, accurate decisions. Sometimes limiting renewables is also an answer, but the investment you've uh, mentioned is all about allowing more. Uh, renewables into the grid, but to make it more and more secure uh, in the meantime. So a little bit like two steps back to take one step forward. You need to uh, develop two uh, electronic systems in the same time. You need to have two systems. The old school conventional system for the sake of security of supply needs to be subsidized. We have the capacity market, different kinds of uh, taxes we have in our energy bills already to sustain the old school coal power plants, which are not economically effective. But in the same time, you need to spend heavily on renewables energy to develop them, but to also sustain them, you need to develop the grid, to develop the energy storage and different solutions that provide the security of supply on this end of the electricity uh, market. So uh, it is not an easy task. And the uh, main subject in this plan is the operator, PEC, which is having the whole map on its, uh, uh, in its office and it's having uh, this uh, responsibility to take decisions. I want us to talk about uh, nuclear energy for a little bit. There have been a couple of important announcements this week uh, with Polish government officials spilling the beans a little bit on places where uh, further nuclear projects in Poland could be located. Let's bring up a visual now uh, where we can see a map. Uh, in yellow, we see the first Polish uh, nuclear power plants uh, uh, where they, they will be built. And in red and blue, we see the potential new developments. Uh, in red, Konin and Bełchatów, uh, nuclear power plant number two. And in blue, Wrocławek and Oświęcim, uh, small modular reactors. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Do you think that this is all going to come to fruition? So the first one is the Lubiatovo nuclear power plant, which is a conventional nuclear power plant provided with AP-1000 technology from US, from American Westinghouse. We are just on the verge of the deal on construction of this uh, of this nuclear power plant. According to government uh, announcements, the deal is to be signed this year. Even if it happens uh, at the beginning of the next year, it's not bad, of course. The Polish nuclear program is so heavily delayed, but we still have this 
need of nuclear generation to replace the coal generation. So even if it's delayed, we'll still need to have this first nuclear power plant. But uh, it is about the effect of scale, the economy of scale. You cannot just invest in one nuclear power plant to have this uh, economy of scale, to decrease the cost, to increase the economic effectiveness of nuclear energy, to have the uh, stability that is uh, ready to replace the coal generation. So we are looking for a second location. And two preferred localizations announced by the government are Konin and Bełchatów. You have coal generation there already, and it's uh, quite easy from the technical point of view to replace the coal generation with nuclear one. You have the uh, grid, you have the infrastructure, you have the people on the ground, like thousands of workers. Uh, uh, nuclear power plant, it's not only about the nuclear engineers, but also normal engineers that are needed to sustain uh, such uh, uh, endeavor. And we have such people in those regions. It's not a bad idea to replace such a center of industry with another one, new one with a nuclear uh, power plant that will also provide the region with uh, work, with uh, investment, with economic activity that is needed. So uh, there is no decision yet. It is to be announced maybe in, uh, next year. Uh, a, a choice between Bełchatów and Konin. You also have a plan B in different uh, uh, other localizations. And then we come to SMR, so small modular reactors that are taken into, taken into account by Orlen and Sintos, two companies that are uh, mulling to uh, uh, how to include SMRs in their portfolio. We have a conservative assessment from Orlen that the first uh, reactor could come online in 2035, but it depends heavily on what's happening in Canada. In Canada, there will be the first SMR reactor from the BWRX uh, 3000 uh, technology coming from G Hitachi. If it goes online in 30s, it is possible that it will be licensed in Europe too, and uh, it will go online in Poland, maybe in those locations that you've mentioned somewhere around 2035. But it is not a systemic nuclear power plant. It, those are small nuclear reactors that are necessary for the industry to decrease the CO2 emissions from their production. It is important for the companies like Orlen, like Sintos, to have a green portfolio, to gain interest, to sust sustain the investment, to uh, have a great reporting for their customers. Well, you mentioned Orlan, and I just want to squeeze in a final question. Uh, let's take a look at a commercial from uh, from Polish energy giant Orlan, which was released a couple of days ago. A lot of people are talking about it. Let's take a look at it. Mamy lepszy olej. Spójrz. Lepszy? Jak? Czyli? Paliwo bez rosyjskiej ropy. Wojtek, zatankuj do pełna. So we see that it showcases uh, the fact that fuel in the Czech Republic doesn't contain even a single drop of Russian oil, a development that was made possible by opening a new pipeline in the Czech Republic. Do you think that Europe can wean itself off Russian energy completely by 2027 uh, as the European Commission aims to? And just very briefly, what are your thoughts? Mm. Of course, it is technically uh, possible. It was possible in 2022. The issue is that not everyone is willing to do so. So I keep my fingers crossed for negotiations in Brussels to make the last customers of Gazprom or Rosneft from Russia disappear, uh, to, to make the Russian oil disappear totally. It is feasible, it is economically viable, so let's do it together. Okay, Wojciech Jakubik, founder of Energy Security Center here in Poland. Thank you so much for all your insight. Thank you. And that concludes the bottom line for today. I was your host, Marie Cato. We bring you the best of regional business Monday to Friday at 10 past 5 CET on TVP World. And in the meantime, for the latest in regional business, follow us on X and on tvpworld.com. Goodbye.